Welcome Jackie Jordan, Emmy-nominated television producer, author of Get On TV, and the recent book Heartfelt Marketing, allowing the universe to be your business partner. Founder of TVGuestBert.com. Happy day after Thanksgiving or the happy Thanksgiving leftover day. I'm Jackie jo- Jordan, hosted here by TVGuestBert.com, and we are the industry show with the experts. We repeat here tonight at 5 p.m. on 1290 KZSB and at Sunday at 5 p.m. Um, on News Press Radio here in Santa Barbara. And uh, we also air on the homepage of TVGuestBert.com on Blip TV. And if you want to friend us or join us on uh, Facebook for all of our company updates and for all of our radio show programs. It's Jackie Jordan Inc. at tvguestbert.com. Today's show is sponsored by the non pharmaceutical hologram chip and wristband that helps you sleep at night and gives you ep- extra energy during the day. It's the CX2wristband.com. And um, hopefully, next time we will, I'll be on the show, I'll have my little wristband on. <laughs> And I'm joined in the studio with our executive producer, Richard Wayner, and also our studio producer, Richard Dugan, and Dylan Hanley's helping us with production here. Um, So anyway, when I was growing up, um, there was uh, diversity on television was, um, in my opinion, quite vanilla. Um, But now there are predictions that the Spanish network, especially uh, the NBC universally, uh, universal owned Univision, could trump the other major networks. And joining us um, on this topic for this hour to talk about the Espanol television influence uh, will be Christopher Cromit, after years of running CNN Espanol, who says that the Spanish television invasion is here to stay. Also joining us this hour, we have TV guestbert and Latina comedian Grace Fraga, who says Spanish comics have more range in their routines, and we will find out why. Also this hour is TV guestbert and educator and bride-to-be, Zuliga Fertilian, Fertilian, who runs an international preschool out of the Hoboken, New Jersey waterfront. And she's going to tell us about some of the influences that the um, Spanish invasion um, on television has with her, with her children because she runs, you know, she is leading the next ge- uh, generation in education with children. And um, I've had the privilege of going to her um, schools, which are, are ex- extraordinary. Uh, also, finally, this hour, we're going to, because it is the day after Thanksgiving and Black Friday and we're all shopping, we're going to get into the Christmas spirit. And I've already heard on the radio some Christmas songs playing, which I don't know about you. I'm still back in September, so it's quite shocking. But we have a Pakistani and American who released a Christmas album for the season. So talking about diversity, we're going to cover it all this hour. But joining us first, Spanish Network Univision is the fifth largest in the U.S., and cable networks like Comcast have some 50-plus Spanish channels. And if you're like me, um, I am not bilingual. I would love to be, especially being um, living in Southern California. And I'd like to watch the shows to pretend that I can actually pick up on the language, but they speak so fast. Um, our show, this show, um, Jackie Jordan show here on our radio station is also in South, South, uh, Southern California, Santa Barbara. So no one here needs to give you an example of the bilingual lingual culture that we're currently living in. So joining us is Chris Cromet, who ran CNN in Espanol for eight years, and he's currently a programming consultant on all Spanish media topics. C- welcome, Chris, and happy Thanksgiving or happy day after Thanksgiving to you. How are you? Bueno, felicidades. Uh, same to you. <laughs> I, I'll bet the, my, here's my best Spanish. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, Thanksgiving Day is Dia de Acción de Gracias. So there you have it. You know, I have to just say about the Spanish language, it is so beautiful. I understand why it's a romance language. It is, <laughs> you could be cursing at me, and I would still think it's absolutely beautiful. Well, there you go. So uh, Spanish language uh, channel today, be, become will, will a Spanish language television Network become the top-rated TV network in the United States. Is that is that really a possibility? It seems inevitable at this point. We've got these mega trends that are happening demographically, and it really seems to be a matter of of time. Uh, some people are saying as soon as three years from now. Other predictions have it more like maybe seven to ten years from now that uh, Univision and I know it's rude to correct the host, but Univision is not owned by NBC Universal. They own Telemundo, which is Univision's competitor. There you um, go. I, I don't mind the correction at all. I'd rather be cor- I'd rather be correct than <laughs> uncorrected. <laughs> a- a- absolutely. 
And you've got the demographic trend, the growth in the Hispanic population. The 2010 census figures, which will be coming out soon, are expected to show a 40% plus increase in the Latino population in the United States over the last 10 years and along with that, a huge growth in the number of Spanish speakers. And you've also got the erosion that's been happening among the big three or the big four English language channels. So those lines, the descending lines for the English language and the ascending line for the Spanish language, specifically in Univision, they're going to cross. So you do think that, in fact, a Spanish network will actually take the lead over the other networks at some point in the future, five to ten, yeah, seven to ten years? Absolutely, and probably... During this season or next, we'll begin to see the occasional um, Friday night um, primetime slot where Univision in a key demographic will actually place number one above the other four. That's amazing. But I have to also say, and we, did, we spoke about this in our, our recent radio shows, you know, the actual networks are actually declining. So in a weird way, it's not quite such a surprise that somebody else is going to creep up from behind. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. think the census, the 2010 census, is also going to play a part in this? Yeah, certainly, and it's the reality of the number of the census will reflect, and also all the publicity, uh, all the talk about the census. Of course, there'll be a lot of discussion about um, gerrymandering and redesigning congressional districts and that kind of thing. So it'll be front and center on people's minds, and one of the, not the key headline, will be this huge, continuing huge growth in the Latino population. What is interesting is that even though, as you mentioned, there are now dozens and dozens of Spanish-language channels, Univision, Univision, continues to be very dominant. They really continue to control the market. That's been a remarkable um, situation for them of being able to hang on to the lion's share of the Spanish-speaking audience in the U.S. What um, are some of the key factors that play into uh, Univision's dominance? Well, there is a sort of good news, bad news. The good news for people looking to get into the Spanish language media space is that folks are very brand loyal. So once you appeal to them and persuade them that your product or your station or your program is the one they should be consuming or listening to, then you probably have them hooked. The flip side of that is the longtime players, such as Univision, benefit from that. Audience tends to be very brand loyal, uh, tends to take guidance from family members, friends, and so forth as to what they're watching, and uh, Univision uh, will continue to dominate. Well, Chris, I, I'm going to ask that you stay around with us. We're going to take a quick commercial ba break. Um, still to come in this hour, we've got Latina comedian Grace Fraga joining us, a, a TV guestbert educator. Zuliga will um, also talk to us about this, this impact pack that we're speaking about. And we're going to end the hour with a Pakistani-American who released a Christmas album. So please stay with us. Oh, you know I'm on tonight. My hips don't lie, and I'm starting to feel it's right. The attraction. The Jackie Jordan Show with host Jackie Jordan on TVGuestBert.com. Radio KZSB, 1290 AM, Santa Barbara, and worldwide. Alex Detail was a child genius who saved the world from the evil harvesters. But a decade later, this mysterious alien force has returned, and Alex is no longer a prodigy. Now, in order to save the world again, he must survive his kidnapping, fight his evil clone, and get his ship to the planet Pluto, where he will uncover the universe's ultimate power. Alex Details Revolution, a thrilling new novel by Darren Campo. Buy online or wherever books are sold. Ladies up in here tonight, no fighting. We got the refugees No fighting. Here. No fighting. Shakira, Shakira. <laughs> The Jackie Jordan Show, presented by TVGuestBert.com on News Press Radio KZSB, 1290 AM, Santa Barbara. Today's show is sponsored by the non-pharmaceutical hologram chip that helps you sleep at night and gives you energy during the day. And you can find out more at CX2Wristband.com. And the uh, wrist, actual wristband also so is going to give you energy and keep you vibrant all day, and it's non-transdermal. Um, so we're talking this hour, um, you know, on our full bellies from Thanksgiving. Um, we're going into the Christmas season, but we're also talking about the Spanish in invasion on television. And joining us on the phone this hour is Chris Cromit, who ran CNN at Espanol for eight years and also consults for media programming. Uh, Chris, we were talking the last hour about... Univision, how it has a more a more than likely chance of becoming the number one 
um, network in the United States over the next five to seven or possibly 10 years. Um, what is the, um, I guess, what is, in, in terms of the U.S., what are some of the um, Spanish influential shows that are actually on our U.S. networks that you, want to, that you can talk about? Well, there are any number of, of uh, programs that play well. I mean, th- there would tend to be a link between you know, Latino themes or Latino cast members and tune-in. But uh, networks such as Fox, which tends to target more urban, uh, does pretty well among uh, English-speaking Latinos. So uh, th- the reality is that on the English-language side, uh, attractive programming is attractive programming. So um, the way to attract a Latino audience is to make sure that the programming is inclusive, that you're not doing anything to alienate the audience. But people will tend to flock to quality programming if they're comfortable with the language. What are some of the common blunders uh, committed programmers and advertisers make in their forays into the Spanish language TV business? Because I think that there are a lot of subtle mores that, you know, that um, may not be taken into consideration. Yeah, an example I like to give to uh, folks who may not be, be very familiar with the Latin American market is you would never think to uh, program exactly the same a TV series for the U.S. as you would for the U.K. as you would for Australia. Yet that's exactly what a lot of programmers try to do. Uh, in, in targeting, quote-unquote, Spanish speakers, they're not taking into account that you've got people from 20 different countries. So uh, there has to be an awareness of the diversity and an awareness also of the points of overlap or contact where you can appeal uh, to folks and transcend those lines, those country of origin uh, lines. Yes, I think that's a really, really good point. I know that one of my um, favorite shows on TV that is now going off the air was Ugly Betty. Um, I thought that was really clever. And that was um, uh, an import. That was a programming import um, from, uh, was, it was Selma Hayek, right? Who was the executive producer who brought that, what brought that property yeah, in? She's the one who brought in Betty La Fea, which is how the, the program was known, the series known in Latin America, wildly successful. And uh, I think that's a great example of what needs to happen in reverse when English language programmers are thinking about um, exporting or adapting their programming for the Spanish language audience. If you look at Pugly Betty and you compare it side by side to Betty La Fea that came from Latin America, uh, certainly the basic premise is the same and there are certain plot lines and character lines that are similar. But the the concept was very much tailored to the U.S. and to New York. And that kind of thing really needs to be happening in reverse. And interestingly, Salma Hayek is importing another Latin American uh, program, the series called Los Roldan. And again, it's ABC that has um, uh, opted to bring that program on. We'll see if that fares as well as Ugly Betty did. And uh, joining us on the phone right now, we also have Latina comedian and television guestbert Grace Fraga, who's from Argentina. And uh, Grace performs all over the country, and as I love what she how she describes herself, the saucy Argentinian comedian, rumored to be the distant relevant relative of Eva Perón. She's a Spanish Valley girl with Neiman Market tastes, living on a Kmart budget who does stand-up nationwide to both Latina and, as I call it, vanilla audiences. Please welcome Grace Fraga. Grace, how are you? Great. How are you, Jackie? Good, good, good. You're uh, on, the, on, on the air with uh, Chris Cromit from CNN uh, Español, and we were just speaking about um, Selma Hayek's um, bringing in or importing some Spanish television properties to the U.S., and what I think is, you, you know, you have a comedian um, background. How is the Spanish humor different than than the U.S. humor, especially as you experience it in your, your comedy and your performing? Well, I think in general, if you, if you look at the Spanish networks and you look at their sketch comedy, it's way broader than the American humor. American humor is a little bit more subtle. Um, and also look at the soap operas, the telenovelas. Ay, Armando, no te vayas. Ooh, you know, it's like so exaggerated, right? It is. It, I love it. It looks so dramatic. Even if you can't understand, if you're like me and you can't understand a word of Eng- a word that they're saying, you know, the hand gestures, the oh, face yeah. gestures, they're slamming doors, they're storming out on each other. You have to love it. Like, you don't really need to understand it to see what's going on. Absolutely. You can follow the plot. Absolutely. 
Um, so I think it's way broader than it is, and I find that also Latino comedians are broader than the what you call vanilla comedian, you know, the the white uh, comedian. Um, I think we exaggerate a little more. We're more lively, more animated, and uh, and we also have more lively and animated families than than wasps. You know, I was married to a wasp, and I, they had two expressions: smiling and not smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> oh, it was hilarious. And when you get a little deeper into something, they're like, uh, yeah, it's nice out there. I'm like, no, we're talking about you people not having... Exp- no, no, they just completely... You know, in my family, it's the opposite. It's like we talk about private issues become public. Right. So, And we're very exaggerated and we're very passionate and we, we just talk a lot and we tease each other a lot. That's another thing. We, we joke around all the time. And uh, unless... You're funny, you're, you're dead in my family, for example. You're dead. It seems to me that, with, especially with uh, programming Spanish content, it seems like you know, you're hitting a lot more um, uh, subgroups uh, when you're, you know, there's a, you know, the subgroups of the Spanish speaking language, are, it's, it's huge. And, Absolutely. And yet, the t- you know, the television seems to be able to meet those needs. Um, do you think that that will that will continue? It, will it be a melting pot, or will there will there need to be like kind of sub programming content to support all the different audiences, or what per, what I perceive as the sub audiences? Well, and uh, either of you can a- to answer oh, that, Chris okay. or okay, Grace. Okay, go ahead, Chris. Oh, I'm ha- I'm happy to jump in. I, I think actually there's there's a lot of humor to be found in the perceptions and misperceptions and stereotypes that exist among people from different Latin American countries. In other words, the funniest Argentine jokes I've ever heard are the ones told by, told by Argentines, absolutely. Yeah, and I think there's, there's, a, there's a lot of humor also in the differences in how the Spanish language is used in different countries. I mean, there are words that are perfectly acceptable in one country that are absolutely, you know, would be banned from uh, being used on television in another country because they're considered obscene. Yeah. So that can lead to a lot of very funny situations. And for someone like me who is trying to learn the language, like, that's going to put me over the edge. You may end up being extremely funny without meaning to. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, wow, they're all smiling at me. I'm doing a good job here. <laughs> It'll be like going to the nail salon and they're really just making fun of you making fun of me (laughs) the classic Seinfeld episode Um, Chris for the Spanish language TV news landscape um, you know what I find very fascinating as a television producer is the different stories that get covered like I love when I travel and I watch CNN abroad and the stories are so different than what I see here at home in the States Uh, can you comment on that <clears throat> yeah, the news agenda is is much broader. So, a Univision or Telemundo or a CNN in Espanol, in the case of uh, it's appealing to the U.S. audience, would need to cover all of the major stories that you would see on NBC News or ABC News, and then these other categories of stories that relate specifically and more deeply to Latino issues, plus news from countries of origin. So if there's a major threat of Venezuela or Colombia, a Spanish-language medium will tend to cover it more heavily because they know they've got among their audience people who are from that country and may have parents or grandparents who are still in that quote-unquote faraway place from a U.S. Anglo perspective, but maybe in the middle of a coup. And they want to know, make sure that their, their you know, parents are, are okay. Right, right. You know, for somebody like me, I crave that kind of programming diversity in the news. That's just my personal opinion. Um, that's why I think it's so exciting when I'm abroad and I get to see, you know, the you know the CNN news in its capacity covering such um, top, you know, such diversity of topics. Because for me, when you flip through the channels or the network channels here in the news, they're telling the same story. You know, th- you know, they're, they're repeating the same type of story, and I find that that's what's so refreshing about, you know, CNN Espanol um, abroad. So, um, but that's interesting, and uh, you know that it has a wider, um, a wider content, um, a content base. Um, do you think that the um, novellas uh, would sustain a primetime spot, Chris? Right. A Spanish language. Well, actually, they're doing it now. I mean, that's the staple of 
Univision's programming. Here in the States. Are the States. here in the States, which air in prime time. And actually, Telemundo, or excuse me, Univision recently uh, locked up a new long-term deal with the Mexican behemoth Televisa, which supplies the telenovelas to Univision. So they're going to have programming uh, for years to come. And they're very much over the top, as, as you and Grace were saying earlier, uh, but, but compelling, very, very attractive people to look at. Most of the, uh, the gentlemen have these you know, beautiful centurion voices, and, and then the plot lines get pretty rich and complex, and somehow you get sucked in if you're not careful, and you find you can't miss an episode. It's so funny because that type of soap opera obviously wouldn't work. Well, you know, we've had Melrose Place and 90210, so we've had our own versions of soap operas in the primetime slots, but we haven't really seen that um, popular, you know, that hasn't been that popular um, as of recent. Um, Chris, thank you so much for all the information and, and joining us um, this hour. Um, please don't overeat this weekend on those leftovers. And um, Grace, I, if I'm going to ask you to stick around because I want to find out about George Lopez. He happens to be one of my favorite comedians. So I'd love to talk to you more about that. Great. We'll be right back after this message. Jackie Jordan Show with host Jackie Jordan on TVGuestBird.com, Radio KZSB, 1290 AM, Santa Barbara, and worldwide. Alex Detail was a child genius who saved the world from the evil harvesters. But a decade later, this mysterious alien force has returned, and Alex is no longer a prodigy. Now, in order to save the world again, he must survive his kidnapping, fight his evil clone, and get his ship to the planet Pluto, where he will uncover the universe's ultimate power. Alex Detail's Revolution, a thrilling new novel by Darren Campo. Buy online or wherever books are sold. The Jackie Jordan Show, presented by TVGuestBert.com on News Press Radio KZSB, 1290 AM, Santa Barbara. Say bell ring, are you listening? In the lane, snow is listening. Hi, I'm Jackie Jordan, and this hour is being sponsored by CX2Wristband.com, the non-pharmaceutical hologram chip that helps you sleep at night and gives you energy during the day. And if you don't want to wear that hologram chip, you can wear the wristband. Um, on this hour, uh, we've been talking about the um, what I've been calling the Spanish invasion of television here in the States, although it, it's not new. It's just that I'm trying to... It just seems, in my opinion, really dominating all of the channels, and, and, and rightfully so, and I so get that. Um, on the phone uh, with us right now is Latina comedian and TV guestbert Grace Fraga. Grace, you know, George Lopez is one of my favorite comedians, and I know that when we spoke before this, uh, this show, you had said, you know, that the Latino comedians have a lot broader range of content um, to play with. Um, how com- what do you, why do you think so? Well, um, I think uh, first it started uh, with the differences between white people and Latinos, and that was kind of like the focus of everything. Uh, George Lopez, actually, what he did is he really showed us that even though we have differences, we are all going through the same experiences, you know, when he talks about his family. And also, at the same time, he showed us what it is to be a Latino in an all-white society. So, um, and I think now the, the comedy, uh, personally, what I'm doing is, instead of focusing on my ethnicity, which I do brush upon, you know, and I talk about a, about a couple of things, maybe five minutes out of, out of an hour, uh, I'm trying to focus on the experiences that are human and that we all have. And, and yes, maybe my experience has the Latino palette, but it's still the same one as you have. You know, you have a mother. Uh, you, you had a relationship with your mother, you, you date, uh, you were married. You know, we have the same experiences. And I think that's where the Latino comedy is going uh, towards, to, towards that um, sharing the experience of being human rather than focusing on the differences. Yeah, I definitely, I, th- I love that. I, I, th- I love that um, about, the, about the humor. I also think, tell me, um, is it difficult to be a comedian? Like, I know when you're a comedian, you're, al- you're allowed to express the PC or the non-PC of mm-hmm. things. Thank you know, God. <laughs> yes. You know, because those lines are so touchy, you know. Um, 
in, in, in but it, I guess as a, as, a, as a comic, you're allowed to push the envelope on that. And a lot of, you know, a lot of comedians really get to express that, that, that avenue. How do you do so? Um, or when, you know, what is your, your thread line or through line when you do that in your own, uh, in your own humor? Well, uh, as far as the Hispanic experience is concerned, um, I always say, you know, when I first he- came to this country 20 years ago, I w- lived in New Orleans, and I had no idea I was Hispanic. <laughs> I was clueless. I thought Hispanic was a male emotional disorder. <laughs> Hispanic. Hispanic. <laughs> I get that. I'm telling you, I had no idea. Somebody told me you're Hispanic. I'm like, what's a Hispanic? <laughs> <laughs> no clue. So that was the first thing, you know, coming from another country. Uh, the people that are born here, of course, don't have that experience. But that was my first experience. And then to learn what Hispanic was. And, and you find all this gamut of people, you know, that, that you have different cultures within the Latin American culture. Right. Um, and uh, another thing that uh, I talk about, and I lost track of the question you asked me, because <laughs> I got so involved in the Hispanic. No, that, that, that's totally okay. But um, that's, that's as far as the Hispanic, because we're talking about the Latino thing. And, of course, I talk about other things, you know, dating and marriage and, and all that good stuff. But, but that's, um, you know, my experience as a Latino, and that allows me to say, first of all, in Argentina, we don't have that racial or ethnicity division where, okay, check and you know, you're Hispanic or you're black or you're in Argentina, you're just Argentine. Whether you're Jewish, black, white, it doesn't matter. In- yeah, interesting, so, yeah. Yeah, so that was the first political, so to speak, thing that I got to talk about. Um, and, and just the fact that all of a sudden, I come to this country, and I'm something I didn't know I was. Well, you know, it's so funny you, s- you said that. I appreciate you pointing that out. Because I'm a producer, and I'm interested in content and content development. When you do your acts, do you have to do different content for your different audiences? No. You know, I do my act. Got and it. And it's the same across the board. It's the same across the board. Of course, if I see kids in the audience, I will not talk about certain topics. Um, and if I see that it's all older people, so you're you age know, appropriate for sure. Exactly, I'll I'll cater to that. I maybe tone down the not the language, but the punchlines a little bit. You know, just the, it's all in the words. Sometimes you can change one or two words and make it cleaner. Um, and that's what I do. But I just talk about myself and my experience because that's what comedy is about. You talk about how you see the world and how the world affects you. Excellent. Grace, thank you so much for joining us. If you'd like more information about Grace or like to know her uh, tour schedule, you can find out more information at gracefraga.com. She also has a fantastic DVD series called Full of Grace. And if you also want more, you can find out more about Grace at tvgespert.com. Grace, thank you so much. When we come back, um, we are go- We have a Pakistani-American who sings, uh, who's released a Christmas album. And also, um, TV Gespert and Jackie Jordan Inc. Publishing are running a huge Amazon.com promotion with the release of Alex Details Revolution, giving away 10,000 paperbacks uh, on Amazon. So if you're a sci-fi fantasy reader, check your account out. We'll be right back. The Jackie Jordan Show with host Jackie Jordan on TVGuestBird.com. Radio KZSB, 1290 AM, Santa Barbara and worldwide. Alex Detail was a child genius who saved the world from the evil harvesters. But a decade later, this mysterious alien force has returned and Alex is no longer a prodigy. Now, in order to save the world again, he must survive his kidnapping, find his evil clone, and get his ship to the planet Pluto, where he will uncover the universe's ultimate power. Alex Details Revolution, a thrilling new novel by Darren Campo. Buy online or wherever books are sold. His palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. There's vomit on his sweater already. Mom's spaghetti, he's nervous. The Jackie Jordan Show, presented by TVGuestBert.com on News Press Radio KZSB, 1290 AM, Santa Barbara. He opens his mouth, but the words won't come out. He's choking how? Everybody's choking now. The clock's run out. Time's up. Hi, I'm Jackie Jordan here, and uh, we're presented by TVGuestBert.com. We've been talking about the invasion of Spanish television, and joining us on the phone right now from Hoboken, New Jersey, is Bride-to-Be, 
TV Gespert and founder of an international um, preschool, which I think is fantastic. I've had the privilege to visit, and I think it's so progressive and um, so the way our children should be educated and learned. It's called Beyond Basic Learning, and her name is Zulika Fertilian. Zulika, how are you? Hello, Jackie. How are you? Good afternoon. Love what you're doing over there in terms of education and the lead that you're taking. Um, and you really are, you know, taking a very dissolving the lines in this whole multicultural conversation. But we've been talking this hour about the influences of Spanish television. And I started the show just saying that, you know, as when I was growing up, and I'm quite vanilla myself, but there weren't a whole lot of. Um, you know, diversity in television. Um, it was pretty. It was all pretty vanilla. It, right now, it's 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 definitely changing. And uh, we had Chris Cromit from CNN Espanol on the sh- uh, the show earlier, and he said, you know, uh, Univision looks like it w- in five to seven to ten years will be the number one network here in the United States. What is the impact that um, diversity has on the children that you see? Because you're you're dealing with the future generations. Absolutely, absolutely, Jackie, and I'm so glad that you share that because we're saying that in the future, the census is saying that the Hispanic population is going to outpace any other ethnic group here in the United States, and the influence on children is huge. More particularly, when you think about the young children, first, they're excited about being able to find Hispanics on TV, right, because before, they did not have that exposure or experience to see themselves or see their um, category or in our culture being represented on TV. So we have some great comedies and some great shows that evolve really focusing on the Hispanic um, community. But as more time has progressed, it has also been noticed that the Hispanic community is also very diverse, and we tend to group them all into one category. So you have dialects in the language itself amongst the different cultures. So children now are starting to become more discerning. They're starting to see, okay, I'm seeing Hispanics on TV. I'm glad that there's a show like Dora. Dora has been a huge hit. That's right, Dora the Explorer. Exactly. And Dora popular went, Halloween costume too. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And they spin off a whole bunch of different products for the families. So you have Dora bottles. I see my children coming up with Dora backpacks, Dora shoes, Dora clothing. So they not only did they realize that the Hispanic market was something that was increasing in population over time, but that the children persuaded their parents to buy these products and buy lots of it. So now they have a product that they're trying to see, wow, this sells. What can we do with it? But as we start looking at closer the Hispanic family and the Hispanic children, two key factors come into play, and that is, are the Hispanic population continue to be diluted by being grouped into one and therefore losing their individuality? Are the Mexican Hispanics similar to the Puerto Rican Hispanics, similar to the Dominican Hispanic, or the Argentine and Hispanic? Because there are differences in the way they perceive their culture. And the next question is, are we represent them accurately across the race spectrum? There are a lot of Puerto Ricans that are very dark, have the very African um, looks and features that you don't see portrayed in the Spanish channels. You You know, I can so see why you work with children. You have got the softest, gentlest, kindest voice. (laughs) 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 And you you talk about such a complicated issue in just in just the simplest way. Thank you. You know, so I could see that. Uh, Do the the children look to you know? I'm sure there are a couple resources that children look to to identify themselves. You know, and the, and the media is certainly one of them. And you're you're definitely in a like a cult. Your your environment, your educational environment, is definitely a melting cultural pot. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I think that we'd also talked earlier about how beauty is playing a factor yes. in in the portrayal. Can you comment on that? Absolutely. When you look at Latina magazine you, and you compare that to People magazine or just another magazine, um, a style magazine, you would notice that the lines and the view of beauty is consistent across the groups. There's very little differentiation in terms of the color that the children see themselves, the, uh, what type of weight or height you need to be, 
what your hair color should be. And so what happens is that children are starting to notice, yeah, there's Hispanics that I'm seeing in Hispanic um, televisions, but they don't look very much like the regular person that I see next door to me. So then the images of the children are starting to vary, and they start to feel that those are the features that they need to have in order to be accepted by society. Most influential are the four-year-olds and the five-year-olds who are still trying to understand the sense of what's right and what's wrong, what is fair and what's not fair. When they do that and they watch a show on TV, very similar to what the other speakers said, the word Hispanic, does that mean that I'm going to panic? Children will look at features and say, well, do I have to have those features in order to be accepted? And when they see their friends in their school and they don't see that their friends carry similar toys or materials or even food, I had a child say to me, I don't want to eat that food because I want to eat the same food that my friend has, and it happened to be American food. So we're starting to see how the television and the portrayal of beauty or what is acceptable or even product placement in some of the foods that they're eating are not very diverse. So therefore, the children feel that they must always have maybe pasta and refuse the Hispanic culture cuisine that has been given to them over the years. You know, it's so important to me to have you on in this conversation because I think as as producers and um, programmers, I think that we, you know, you are... You are on the complete receiving end of what is being put out there in the media, you know, and so you are at the first line of seeing how what we put out into the media is impacting the children and, you know, and we know that there's advertising manipulation, you know, that, that if we can get something in a kid's hand that they want to sell them, you know, to sell their parents on it. it, it it's a really powerful thing and yet you're, you know, what you're trying to bring to the table is, is you know, education, diversity, choice. It's, it's a really interesting uh, balance that you hold, and I really respect and admire you for it. And you also have um, a big uh, weekend coming up, don't you? Yes, I do. Thank you for asking. I'm getting married. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Well, how, uh, you know, I send you all sorts of light, love, and blessings on your on your wedding. And thank you so much, given that, that that's going on, that you took the time to talk to us today. So please take care. It's uh, Zuliga Fertilian, and it's Beyond Basic Learning out of Hoboken, New Jersey. We'll be right back. The Jackie Jordan Show with host Jackie Jordan on TVGuestBird.com, Radio KZSB, 1290 AM, Santa Barbara, and worldwide. Just hear those sleigh bells jingling, ring, ting, tingling, too. Come on, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Alex Detail was a child genius who saved the world from the evil harvesters. But a decade later, this mysterious alien force has returned and Alex is no longer a prodigy. Now, in order to save the world again, he must survive his kidnapping, fight his evil clone, and get his ship to the planet Pluto, where he will uncover the universe's ultimate power. Alex Detail's Revolution, a thrilling new novel by Darren Campo. Buy online or wherever books are sold. When the snow is glistening, it's a beautiful sight. Let's dream by the fire tonight. Walking in a winter wonderland. The Jackie Jordan Show, presented by TVGuestBert.com on News Press Radio KZSB, 1290 AM, Santa Barbara. Hi, I'm Jackie Jordan. Thank you so much for joining us on The Drive Time. And uh, in this last segment of the hour, um, we've got uh, somebody who's just come to my attention. We've got his uh, Christmas albums here. Throughout history, relations between Christians and Muslims at times have been fraught with many challenges. And in order to bridge the gap in a harmonious and peaceful way, we've got Sean Ray on the line, who just released a Christmas album, Pakistanian-American. Sean, thank you so much for joining this hour. How are you? Thank you, Jackie. Um, a great pleasure to be here on your show today. Thank you. We've we you know we've been playing your Christmas music here um, all hour, and it's oh, wow. b- it's beautiful. And uh, you know you've got a big message behind the just the release of the music itself. Do you want to tell tell us about that? Yes, uh, Jackie. Um, today, you know, as we see, uh, world peace is really a victim of conflicts that are ranging from geographical to conceptual, and from 
political to religious. And uh, <clears throat> because of this, you know, human agony is really growing multidimensionally. And one of the reasons, rather the core reason of such financial and political and social unrest is actually a lack of oneness and an absence of interfaith harmony between societies. So um, that is the purpose that, that the, that the uh, Christmas album has been uh, made uh, for that reason, for interfaith harmony. You spent the first half of your life in Pakistan. You were raised Muslim. You've been here in the United States for 30-plus years. Um, you are a, also a lawyer. And um, and this is your second album that you've been doing, and you just finished an intercontinental tour uh-huh. with it. Um, what what are you getting any criticism for doing this, or are people like open openly embracing your music, or do they feel that there's an agenda behind it? Well, I, I'll tell you, um, uh, it, people are absolutely uh, uh, open to this, uh, and that is why the. Intercontinental tour took place uh, starting in December of 2009, in which after we completed the uh, album, uh, I went on a, a four-month tour uh, to the uh, to Europe, uh, Middle East, and the Far East to, to gauge the reaction uh, of the Muslim world in Europe. Uh, I went to uh, um, uh, you know the Great Britain uh, in London. I went to uh, uh, Rome, uh, and uh, I went to the, the Vatican. Uh, I went to uh, Israel, I went to Turkey, I went to Saudi Arabia, you know. Uh, You're a man UAE. with a mission. <laughs> Thank you so much, yeah, UAE. Carrying uh, the white flag. <laughs> Absolutely. I uh, went to Pakistan, Lahore, Islamabad, Karachi, and actually I'm supposed to be, go- be going to India at the end of February because I've been invited by the Indian press to, to go also over there. What so does the Muslim the community TV. think of the Christmas album? Beg your pardon? What does the Muslim community think of your Christmas album? Oh, I mean, uh, based, based on all the, the interviews I had with the media, uh, uh, all over the Muslim world, uh, uh, it was absolutely incredible. Uh, because, you know, everybody, uh, you know, human to human, everybody wants peace, you know, uh, you know and, and it's actually certain uh, fringe elements uh, within all religions, you know, that try to create all kinds of uh, problems for everybody. But uh, human to human, you know, people <laughs> you know, we just want to live in peace and oneness and you know, go about the daily day and, you know, have kids. I really believe that. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I really believe that. So what, we're about to ready to wrap up, but what would your, your, your message be at this, uh, at this holiday time uh, to your fellow Americans? Would be, you know, if everybody lived in the, in, in the uh, spirit of Christmas uh, uh, on a daily basis instead of just in the Christmas season, uh, we'd all have a very uh, happy, happy world in oneness. I, I, yeah, and a safe world too. You know, Absolutely. I think that I think that everybody's looking for for a sense of uh, that security, harmony, and I think certainly um, the the safety. Um, I think the the safety, which is what the show's been about um, this hour, or at least about the, the bringing into diversity. If you want more um, information about Sean Ray, it's Sean S H A W N R A E dot com, and the album is uh, the album is Love Knows No Borders. I'm Jackie Jordan. Thank you so much for joining me. You can find us here, the industry uh, show with the experts, uh, every Friday at 5 p.m. and again at 10 p.m. This episode was brought to you by CX2Wristband.com. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Yes, yes. 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 Yes.